A new study of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia has found two-thirds of the coral has died along a large section in the north following increased water temperatures earlier this year. Now, the mass bleaching event struck in the most pristine part of the reef. Our correspondent, Will Griffith, was given exclusive access to see the research take place. The planet's largest living structure struggling for survival. This coral should be alive with colour, but it's bleached and barren. These scientists are part of a team that assess the health of the entire Great Barrier Reef, an area bigger than Britain. And here the prognosis is poor. On average, two-thirds of the coral in the northern section has died. I've been coming here for 20 years and, and to see it in this state is just yeah, devastating. In April there was a hell of a lot of col colonies up in that area. Um, they were bleached, they were badly bleached, some were already dying and now we go back and there's, there's just no corals. We visited Lizard Island where the impact was worst. For three months water temperatures were at least one degree Celsius above average, enough to cook some of the coral and make others starve after expelling the colourful organisms which convert sunlight to food. So what used to be a living rainbow of colour down there has now been left largely lifeless in brown and white. In this one northern part of the Great Barrier Reef, the scientists think over 90% of the coral has been killed. This is, the scientists conclude, a man-made problem the warming temperatures caused by carbon emissions. The question for those who live and work here is whether the reef can recover. These events keep happening on an increasingly small time scale. It can't possibly keep up with that. And so this could become the new norm? It could, yeah, absolutely. The, the trajectory is not good. We're still pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and this happened absolutely because of, of that. Vast in scale, the reef underpins a huge industry. Two and a half million people visit each year. In the waters around Cairns, the impact has been far less severe. Only 6% of the coral has perished. Businesses here are keen to stress this part of the reef is alive and well, but they're also mindful of the future. Without the Great Barrier Reef, we wouldn't survive, so it is absolutely of the utmost importance that we ensure that our politicians and everybody else in our community uh, and around the world are doing what they can to ensure survival that, that will the reef depend survives. on how warm these waters become. 2016 is set to be the hottest year on record. It may already have seen one of the Earth's great wonders change forever. Howell Griffith, BBC News, on the Great Barrier Reef. Let's talk now to Dr James Carey, who is Project Coordinator for the National Coral Bleaching Task Force and joins us now from Queensland. James, what's it like to go diving and to study coral that has been bleached so badly, like some of the pictures we've just seen? Yeah, it's very upsetting. Um, I saw it from the air in March and April when I did aerial surveys over the entire length of the reef. And to go into the water and, and see graveyards of coral um, reef after reef is, is pretty upsetting, to be honest with you. But is the reef actually dead, James, or, or could it recover? Well, it depends where you are. So, uh, as your um, report said, the northern third is, is very bad. Um, we've lost about two-thirds of the coral on, on average up there, which is obviously devastating. Um, in the south, it's much, much better. Uh, and indeed, you know, the reef can recover, but the problem we have is the return time of these events. So um, if you get another, a fourth mass bleaching event in the next 10 years, the coral won't have recovered, and you're going to see this, this sort of gradual loss or these impacts um, that happen every so often that, that cause this net loss um, over the long term. Yeah, we were hearing about you know, how man has contributed to this. But surely weather patterns play a part too. I mean, El Nino must be devastating in this part of the world in terms of what happens with the coral and the water warming. Well, we, we've experienced El Ninos for as long as we have um, meteorological records. But the problem is that, you know, the way we're changing the climate is, is causing to an increase uh, in global temperatures. And so when you now get these El Nino events, it pushes corals into temperature ranges that they're not used to. They get this stress response, they bleach, and in, in many cases, when they bleach severely, they die. Just briefly, James, are you feeling that there is a will there to try and change things to save the coral? You know, I think among the Australian population, um, they, the, the nation sees 
the Great Barrier Reef as a national treasure and that there is a, a will to, to preserve it. And I think it's about how uh, the politicians actually put, put into action plans to cut carbon emissions um, and also to improve the water quality on the Great Barrier Reef um, to, to give the corals a better fighting chance in the future. Dr. James Kerry, thank you for joining us from Queensland.